everyone, welcome to another edition of Dan Bell Saturday. I believe this is episode number 14. I hope you're all having a wonderful evening and had a uh, nice day today. I'm not seeing any comments. Oh, there they are. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> um, so, uh... I'm sorry for being a little late. Um, I had to get some gas. And, uh, but I wanted to stop here first because I've had this, these houses on a, on another live stream and they have always been dilapidated. I thought they were going to tear them down. At one time there was a notice for demolition. A company has come in and redid these houses, and it looks they're going to do the whole block here. They, they all these houses were abandoned. They tore down three or four of them right over here. Well, let me show you. Let me turn these around. Hello, everyone. Hello. Good evening. Good evening. <coughs> so you see these homes here. These are all being redone. They have new windows. They have doors on them. Uh, the insides are uh, being reconstructed. I think they just gutted them completely and kept the shell and then just started building again inside. And over on the right at the end there, that was a convenience store at one time. And it was, I mean, absolutely completely caved in. Where you couldn't even, I mean, it was just from the roof all the way down to the bottom was caved in. And now there's a new window and it looks like um, there's some, con there's definitely construction going on in there too. So it's amazing. It really is. This is uh a wonderful thing for the community. Um, I don't know if these are going to be purchase or rent, but it is a bright spot. Let's just leave it like that. It's a bright spot. Um, let's see here. Uh, hello, shitbag. Hey, Dan. Me, Riley. And Amanda are hanging by the fire, waiting, waiting you the, or wishing you the best. Well, thank you so much, shitbag, Amanda and Riley. Enjoy that fire. That sounds lovely. Oh, boy. Okay, so, anyway... I just wanted to show you this. Maybe let's drive back behind because I think I think there's a big mess behind this place. And I have some stories to tell you that I think you'll enjoy. Well, I don't know. I have one grievance to say. Now, see this over here. This is marked as... I do not enter under if it catches on fire. So they're getting there. They're definitely getting there. Uh, hello to everyone who is uh, at home right now, maybe having a little anxiety, and you tuned in, and you're just. Uh, going to sit back and relax and watch this, watch me drive aimlessly around to show you things. I hope you are feeling better soon. Deep breaths. I don't know if people are, oh, I don't want to hit that. Okay. Uh, 
Oh, and I'll say hello to all my mods tonight. Let's all say hi to the mods. Uh, mods, you can introduce yourselves. Always good to see you all. And thank you for keeping this a safe, fun place to be and not a miserable experience destroyed by trolls. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah, all of these are being, con they're all under construction. So that's about 20 houses. That is amazing. So let me start off with my grievance story. <laughs> um, so I use several different libraries online for music and stock footage and stock sound effects and all that kind of stuff. And I pay for each one. So every month I pay around a hundred dollars a month for the libraries because uh, I get music and I can put it right on YouTube and it's usually smooth and easy. Well, last week's video, um, YouTube picked up 11 seconds of it uh, and it I'm, I'm a copyright dispute because that's what Envato, E-N-V-A-T-O, tells you to do. So if you have a problem, you just copy and paste um, the copyright dispute that they, the, the license they have. You paste it on there, turn it in. I've done this several times and always within an hour, two hours it's everything is good it's all cleared up well this time no it's not cleared up it's just um i have contacted tried to contact envato there no one's getting back to me so basically what's going to happen is i'm going to have to wait for 30 days to have the copyright clear and then I'm gonna have to wait another two months to get paid for the video which has over a hundred thousand views isn't that nice <laughs> I mean that is just ridiculous and Vado as soon as it clears I'm done with it I'm not using them anymore and I really hate it because I do like their stock library but it's just canned music, 11 seconds. If I had known, I would have just removed it, but I, it's too late now, I can't remove it. So, um, very, very, very upsetting. Annoying. Um, hey, Taco, Bella Lugosi. Hey, Dan, just saw your Big Top video. <laughs> yes, um, Taco, Bella Lugosi. Uh, yeah, a lot of people, I've gotten a lot of, uh, feedback on that video. I don't even know what, you know, honestly, I don't even know what the hell I was thinking. Um, cause I didn't shoot a video that last week until Saturday. Um, and I'm like, what can I do? Like, what kind of video can I shoot in the morning? And I kept thinking and thinking, I'm like, I should go to the block and go to like one of those uh, booth, you know, the video booth place. And so I went down there and I got there as soon as they opened. <laughs> the lady must have thought I was real desperate, but she let, she was like, good morning. And I'm like, hi, I just went for upstairs. And they have this really loud bell for the front door. So you can tell when someone's coming in. Uh, and so it happened a couple of times. I would run to the top of the stairs. And if I saw a shadow, then I knew somebody was coming up. But nobody came up except for one guy who's a doorman at, I believe, Circus Circus. I've seen him out there. He's one of those old craggy looking Baltimore block guys that's been working down there for probably 40 years. 
and he came up, they have a gaming machine upstairs, uh, so you can play, like, um, not, not games, but it's like one of those digital, like, arcade machines, and, uh, he was up there doing that, and if you get points or whatever, they, you can trade them in in the store for merchandise, isn't that <laughs> oh my goodness um let's see here look how pretty this block is uh dogs world hello watching from aldi virginia love you dan wally and terry wally and terry thank you so much aldi i wonder where aldi is i don't think i've ever heard of aldi and I've been through Virginia a few times. More than a few times. Oh, let's see here. We've got... Dan, you're a creative and awesome dude. Break Dance Express. Break Dance Express. Thank you so much. I, uh, I try. I really do try. So I'm very happy with... Uh, with your comment. So thank you. I appreciate it. Let's go over here and get this one. Come on, baby. Open up. See the screen doing that? It's because I'm clicking on the thing and it won't work. Uh, slumber. Hey, Slumber. Hey, Dan. Love you. It's Gio's birthday and we're spending our evening with you. Gio! Happy birthday, Gio. I'm so, uh... You must be thrilled to have a birthday. How old are you, Gio? And where is Aldi, Virginia? Is that, like, Southern Virginia? Dan, any Polaroid feet pics from you coming soon? I don't... I'll have to think about that one. Uh, St. Patty's Day. No. No plans. Susan from South Carolina. Hi, Susan. Uh, Mall. Make it 1080p, please. Mall, I can't... I have no... Uh, I have no control over that. I am very sorry. But I think once the stream is over, it, it will uh, process to 180p. So just give it a little bit of time. Patience. Oh, God. I always hate this road because I feel like I'm going the wrong way, but I'm fine. So another story that I'm going to tell that uh, some of you may be interested in hearing. <laughs> um, I, I do therapy once a week, okay? Sometimes twice a week if I need to. I'm trying to better myself. I'm trying to, you know, there's just a whole lot of stuff going on behind the that I don't really talk about because it's just my private business and I don't, you know. But I will talk about this story because this story is interesting. So, I tell my therapist that there are times where I'm filling orders or editing or out shooting. It becomes sometimes monotonous i get i'm in my office and i just feel like ugh. i'm like i've got to get out of here and so i i uh what's going on here so i i just you know i just get irritated 
and then I will go and I'll watch YouTube or I'll go take Wee Wee for a walk or I'll cook or just, just something to keep myself occupied so those dark feelings don't uh, take over, you know. When you have nothing to do, the dark feelings come in. So I said, I want to try something different. And my friend said, <laughs> my friend said, why don't you try like um, Uber, um, not Uber. Yeah, he said Uber or um, um, DoorDash or um, the other one, Instacart or whatever. And I said, I don't even know, like, I was like, I don't even know how, how do you even, where do you interview for that? And he's like, you don't, you just open the app and then sign up. And I'm like, oh. So I looked at DoorDash and I was like, you know, this might be fun. And so I applied, got all my stuff to DoorDash stuff. And I went out last night and DoorDashed for like six hours. I was only going to do it for like two. I had so much fun. Like literally I was, <laughs> I was like, woo, another order. And I would like click it and I'd be like, oh, we're going to McDonald's. And, um, I just, I had a great time and it felt so good to do something. Even though the pay is absolute shit, I don't really need the money. The money is not the issue. The issue is I just want something to do when I'm sitting around twiddling my thumbs and like going into darkness and thinking about horrible things. I just want something to do. So the DoorDash thing, I had so fun. <laughs> I felt like I was like a teenager again. I was driving. I'm like, um, and then they had like stacked orders. This one stack, I did 13 orders. Okay. I did 13 orders. <laughs> I, um, I made about $125, I think, which I mean, hell, and you get it immediately. It's like, I could have used this back when I was uh, 20 years old, but unfortunately we didn't have anything like that at that time because you, you get paid uh, right after you're done. So the money just went into the fucking, it's like a virtual card. And um, I was like, this is amazing. Like, this is so cool. But I had so much fun driving last night. It was great. There was one order this lady wanted two donuts from 7-Eleven and a chicken box from the block. And I went, oh my God, the block. I said, how the hell am I going to get her chicken box? So I got the things confused. I thought it was just like an order for donuts and then another order somewhere else for the chicken box, but it was the same lady. She had ordered 7-Eleven after um, the food. So she wasn't that far away. So I just drove down to the block. There's an ambulance and like 10 police cars blocking the road. And I'm like, oh God, what am I going to do? The, one of the driver, another, I don't know if he was Grubhub or whatever. He had pulled up in the bike lane and just turned his flashers on and ran up the street to this place to get the food well I drove around and then I think the street's called custom house or something it's a one way street and I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm like fuck it and I just <laughs> go up that street and there's all these strippers out there smoking cigarettes going that's one way it's one way and I'm like oh my god I get right out on Baltimore street and there's nobody and I pull right up. What is going on? Okay, this is a little sketchy. I don't know what the hell that is. I'm sorry, guys. 
the car pulled right up behind me and then turned his uh... but then now there's a cop behind me so that freaked me out man so anyway um, I got her chicken box and rushed back to her house and everything was good God, I hate when a cop is behind me. I always feel like, especially in this neighborhood, they probably think I'm over here buying drugs. But you can't, you have to have some reason to pull me over, so. Okay, he turned. Whew. That feels good. He's gone. I was like, oh my God. I'm going to get pulled over on freaking... Uh, live stream. Um, some of the neighborhoods I visited last night were like really sketchy. Like, there's this one street, and I knew the street, Stricker Street. And I, I got up there, and I'm like, this is like I knew what street it was, and I'm like, it's all drugs. Like, it's just drug dealers everywhere. And sure enough, I pulled down the street. And there were drug dealers, like, literally everywhere. Um, let's see here. ABA 2017. As a new mom, your videos get me through sleepless nights. They have brought me a lot of joy dealing with postpartum depression. Thank you. Oh, ABA. Well, that's wonderful to hear. Thank you so much, and... And good luck with the baby. Babies are a lot of work. I know. Um, I used to... I babysat a baby when I was 17. And my mom would take the baby on the weekend so I could party. Sometimes I could get her to take the baby Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But Sinadra, she was a sweet little girl. What a good baby, but she would keep me up all night. So eventually, I just, she had a nursery. And I just pulled her crib into my room so I could just, when she started cooing or crying, I could just, like, I'm half asleep. I put my hand down in the, in the thing and rub her head, you know, and I'm just like, uh, and then sometimes she'd go back to sleep or sometimes she wouldn't, but oh my goodness, that was... I didn't, after that, I didn't want kids. I said, no kids for me, thanks. Um, and no offense to people who have children. It's it's just my choice. I, didn't want, I was like, this is way too much work. And everywhere I went, people were like, you're awfully young to be a dad. And I'm like, I'm not the dad. I'm like, I'm just trying to sell the baby. <laughs> I told that to one lady, and I don't know where I was, this old lady, and she said, what are you trying to do? I said, man, I'm kidding. I said, what do you think? If I was selling the baby, I would actually tell you it's for sale. It's like, it's ridiculous. So anyway, yeah, the door dashed down that street, down Stricker Street. There must have been five or six drug dealers just standing in the road on the sidewalk right next to where I had to stop and deliver this food. And there's no parking. Each side of the street is packed with cars. So I just had to turn my hazards on and run this lady's food in. And uh, I was like, thank you, gotta go. I just to my truck and got the hell out of there. Because I was like... Remember when they used to say, like, our drivers carry less than $20? Who is that? Domino's or something? Uh, like, that was gonna um, persuade a possible... Like a, like a, someone holding someone up. It's not going to do anything. But anyway, I, it was, it was a really fun shift. 
I was gonna st I was only gonna go a couple hours and then I, I just kept going and going. I'm like, God, this is fun. I'm like running around. And I know the city well, so the address has come up and I'm like, oh I know where that is, and I just go. Rrr. Um Yeah, but if you need like extra money, um, and you have a car, try try one of these apps to get money, uh, quick money. You know, it would pro I mean, if you were doing it full time, I don't know how much you'd make. I, mean, I would think at least a thousand dollars a week if you were doing like full time. Maybe, I don't know. You, or you'd have to probably work more than full time. Probably like 50 or 60 hours. But four thousand a month—that's something to sniff out. Right? That's good money. That's right. Okay, I'm gonna turn the camera around because I want you guys to see the snow through road here. This dark road that we're on. And I'm gonna read this here. Uh, Kate, hi, Kate. Uh, stream your DoorDash uh, shifts. Eh. But the problem is, is I could, but um, I'd have to have two setups. I can't stream and have DoorDash going on my phone at the same time. I could use the iPad. What the hell is this? Road closed detour. Hmm. I wonder why the road's closed. They abandoned a lot of cars along here. It looks like they came and cleaned them all out. Yeah, but I don't know when I'm going to do Grub Pub again. I, I may do it, like, I don't know. I may try to do some tomorrow. Um, but next week is really, really busy. Next week, all the orders go out. I have to um do cuts on another dirty room the uh, the season two and three uh because they're all going 19 episodes are going up onto uh amazon and in uh, you know there's there's 13 on there now there's going to be another 19 so i can just get them out um, I don't have to worry about them anymore. Or not just how, you know, just not have them living on YouTube because a lot of people watch them on Amazon. Um, you know, I get a check every month from Amazon. Um, for the shows being up there. So they can just stay up there forever. Um, I have a distributor that uh, I deal with who um, they do all the closed caption and the uh, actual digital uploads to um, the Amazon library. But Amazon's gotten really picky about what they take because so many, at one point, you could upload anything to Amazon. Um, literally, people were just uploading, like, YouTube videos on Amazon, and you would just see all this just garbage. It was so bad. This stuff was just awful. And I think Amazon has expanded their... They're, like, licensing so they get better stuff for people to watch, basically. And I did not get a wink of fucking sleep last night. I could not sleep for the life of me. I tried and tried and tried. And could not fall asleep. Mama kept wanting to... She, sometimes she likes her bed and sometimes she'll, she wants to be in bed with me. And she wanted to be in bed with me all night. So she was like sleeping up against me, and then I'd roll over, and then she'd get irritated and get up and walk around to the other side of me and lay there. 
and <laughs> it's just driving me crazy. <laughs> but um, you know, I'm sure there are people. There has to be people that like live stream their DoorDash uh, adventures. See, I have an iPad that has uh, cell service on it, so I could do it, but I would just have to get something to, uh, I'd probably use the, I would use the iPad for, whoops, um, to do the DoorDash, and then I would use the phone for the live stream, and just because I know the phone's reliable. I don't know about my iPad mini, which I bought and I never use. I, we've used it on this broadcast maybe, what, 10 times maybe? Such a waste of money. Um, I love the street. North Rose Street. What, what was that? Hold on. Are you turning or coming straight? You're turning good. Hold on, you guys. Is that a real animal? Or is it like a... See, this is the the cemetery here. Look at this window. Oh, let me just let me just pull forward a little bit. Is it a cat? See what I'm talking about? It's, it's not moving. Look. You can't really see it that well here, but... Maybe it's like a statue or something. I don't, I don't know. Well, it looks like we have some new... I think, you know, I think that that's actually the caretaker's uh, uh, apartment or living quarters. Okay, there is a man. Is that? No, that's not a person. Okay. No matter what they do, people still dump shit on this road. But, yeah, I found DoorDash very therapeutic. I, I just wanted to get out and do something besides, like, uh, it's always like me and my friend or friends will go out to the bar and then I wake up the next day with a fucking hangover and I feel like shit and I'm just tired of it man it just gets boring after a while like you want to like experience something a little bit different and it just you know it's always the same vengeful cowboy hey bud I'm well, thank you. Any tips on how to quit smoking? Um, but just stop. I mean, that's... Just stop and deal with it. 
there's no like the best way to do it is just to stop and and deal with how you feel um I feel like shit it takes takes like a few weeks a month once you're past a month you're good armed person reported at 2515 Federal Street but yeah cowboy you can do it just stop just pick a day, throw away all your ashtrays, all your lighters, anything related to cigarettes, throw it all away. And then just, uh, yeah, just quit. I wish you, uh, luck. Myra Stein, hi, honey, how are you? Stay safe out there, Dan. I will try my damnedest to stay safe, Myra. Thank you, darling. A police car flying. Oh my god. <gasps> Jesus Christ, he's going so fast. Let's follow him and see where he's going. I'm not, whoa, he's coming right. <gasps> What's going on? They are running. They're going into a house. Oh, shit. Um, it could be an overdose. It could be a domestic dispute. It could be anything. But... If it's something serious, there's going to be more police showing up here in a minute. Now, if it were, if it was an overdose, there'd be a fire truck and a ambulance. You know what? I'm gonna. Oh, here comes another police car. Never a dull moment. Three police cars. They are going into that house right there. They are running into that house right there. Uh, this is probably not an OD. It's something else. I don't know what is going on here. Uh, Maxim Mills. I just ordered Ash in a decommissioned police car. A matter of circumstance, not choice. And boy, the glare is how we get delivering food. <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, Daphne, hey Daphne. As always, love this Saturday night drive and want to help with gas. Love you, Dan. I love you too, Daphne. Thank you. Oh, we have another here. I just can't get this to move. What the hell is going on? There we go, Myra. Okay, I got Myra already. Okay, Myra Stein, we got you. We got you. Someone's probably gonna come out in cuffs.
Here comes another police car. Can you imagine if, like, a, like, someone ran out with a gun and they're, like, they hijack the truck? They put the gun in my face, like, drive! I'd be like, okay, sir, this will be really good for the live stream. Thank you. Sheldon. Hey, Sheldon, what's up, Sheldon? Um, Good to see you doing good, Dan. Thanks, Sheldon. I'm feeling good, thank you. I really am, for once. Hopefully it'll stay this way. I don't know what, let me try to zoom in on this doorway. Another cop. There must be uh, probably six cops in there now. I just, I don't hear any commotion. cutie pie I can hear I can hear them but I, I, I can't make out what they're what they're saying oh please don't come over here the cops in Baltimore are like really weird about filming but I can film them It's not illegal. It's not illegal. Yeah, I think we're wasting our time. I don't think anything is going on. I think we are going to leave now. Oh, he has a he has a, a clipboard with paper. Hopefully we can find some more excitement like that. Sometimes you see, you know, sometimes it's like really bad stuff. Like I've seen bodies laying on the sidewalk before, like blood. Look at this guy going around me. Sorry I'm not going 100 miles an hour, sir. I am trying to maintain the speed limit. Like illegal citizen 25 miles per hour. I am going 26 miles per hour, sir. You are going way faster than that. Putting other people's lives in peril with your insane driving. <laughs> Killing somebody. <laughs> As I said, I got no sleep last night, and, uh, yeah, I'm a little giddy. Oh, you know what I did? You know what I bought? 
I got a, a Mountain Dew, like the cherry kind. I don't drink Mountain Dew. I, it's just so, it's like a sugar bomb. But, and another reason I don't drink is because it makes me jittery. It, it has got so much caffeine in it uh, and sugar. So I bought one to wake me up for the live stream. <laughs> and yeah, it really is working. Um, it really does make you jittery and crazy. Just like me. Oh my god. Jet Blue, that's hideous. Um, no, I don't I don't smoke weed. I just Now listen, I mean I started smoking weed when I was twelve years old. And I smoked habitually every day for till I was probably 20 or 21 I stopped because I just I couldn't get high anymore um because I smoked so much weed I just couldn't get high anymore but I much preferred like heart like harder drugs than marijuana so Well, I wouldn't say it got old real quick, Kyle. I think, you know, I think I just smoked way too much. Like, I would, like, I was so desperate for a buzz. Like, there would be times where I didn't, I would, I wouldn't smoke for a week. Like, we would all be like, let's not smoke for a week, and then we'll smoke. And you would be so stoned, you know, after the week was over with, and... That was fun, but then you had to spend the whole week not getting stoned, which, I don't know, it was a little taxing. But, like, I am just trying to, you know, like, I want to live a clean, sober life now. Just, like, clean... No drugs, no alcohol, and clean food. Sort of my goal. But soda is gross. I mean, the only reason I got the soda was to wake me up. Which it did. I can, I mean, I can really feel it working. And it tastes like, uh... It tastes like um, the icy drink, the cherry icy drink that you used to get in Kmart. The Kmart used to sell ices, and uh, that's what it tastes like. Let's head up. Uh, this, is, this is Harvard Road or Bel Air Road. This is Bel Air Road. We'll just go up Bel Air Road. Check it out. See what we can see. Eventually, I'm going to take this uh, this Saturday stream on the road um, and start doing uh, shows in different towns. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be a city. I was going to do New York City, but um, it's just a lot of waiting because if you drive around New York. Um, it's just all the traffic lights and the traffic and everything is like really annoying um plus plus uh hold on I just got freaked out for a minute with the truck it felt like it had no torque 
Ugh, wouldn't that be great if it broke down? I would fucking kill myself. I already got put, um, I got it fixed, like, like last couple months ago. Needed a new battery, and something else went up, and it wasn't running, uh, so it cost me like two or three thousand dollars. It's very expensive owning this fucking truck, but I love the truck. It's fun. It's fun to drive around it. What do we got up here? There's Bertha's Soul Food. I delivered Bertha's Soul Food last night, but it was from this place down in Charles Village. I, I guess maybe they have two locations. Hey, Sarah Hurley, how are you? How is the truck <laughs> on gas? Um, I, I really, it's like probably 14, 15, 16 miles a gallon. Hey, Liam, what's up? Um, I only drink Diet Mountain Dew or Zero. Regular taste, nasty to me. Well, I thank you for that, but... Diet soda's no better for you than regular soda. It's such a myth about diet soda. I have a friend who, she drank Diet Coke, or Diet Pepsi, like a, like a lunatic, a gallons of this shit. She would just drink and drink, and she's so skinny. And um, it's because she she would skip meals just drinking Diet Pepsi. And, uh, I told her, I was like, you, you're like killing yourself with this crap. But she, she loved it. Oh, you know what? I can show you a theater up here that we, hey, Liam, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Diet, <laughs> well, uh, DJ Euro Sam. Yeah, I guess you could say she was a little anorexic, but she did turn her life around. She stopped drinking Diet Pepsi later on, and she started working out and just drinking water. But she looks great. I mean, she's in her 40s. Like, she's probably like 45, 46, like my age. And um, she looks like she's 25 years old. I mean, she looks fabulous, so... Whatever she's doing, she does it right. But she just has good genes. Her fucking sister and brother and her parents are all gorgeous people. Beautiful people, so. And I think she got a little bit of work done, but it works because she looks really good. Now, up here... Um, there, I'm pretty, it is on this road because we hitchhiked to it one time. <laughs> is that, that's it right there. Holy shit. Okay, I'm going to turn here. I'm going to turn. You know what? I was at one time with my ex. I, we, we looked at a house up here. We were going to buy a house here. And we ended up not doing it. But the houses here are very pretty. A lot of young people live here now. All the old people have died and their kids are like, well, we're going to sell their house. And... All right. So this, <laughs> that is, that is totally theater. Um, I, God damn, I wish I could get in there and show you guys the inside, but, uh, 
This here is the old Earl movie theater. I don't know what it was previously to the Earl. Um, but they used to show uh, DC's break in. I wish I could. They Yes, it's an Art Deco design. Absolutely. You can probably look it up and... You know, see some... There's some graffiti on top of it. It's an old theater. It's probably from the 30s or 40s. Um... But it was... It was a... Uh, in the end, it was called the Earl Theater. It was a porno theater. Uh, during the week, they showed heterosexual films and then on the weekends they were open 24 hours and they would show gay films and women could get in for free <laughs> so every hooker on Bel Air Road was coming in there for free to either wash themselves in the bathroom or try to get a date and it was just it was insane in that place. All of us went there. I mean, literally all of us. Um, the theater was used... And it was used in Cecil B. Demented, I th think... I... I think it was the karate, the theater where they're, like, running from the cops. I think it was the one that was showing the karate movies. Um, but it was really, really... Uh, I, <laughs> there's one time... It was so fucking funny. Um, I was with my friend Bonnie. Uh, my friend Bonnie, who is... Uh, she is an actress who was in all of John Waters' movies. She was, uh, her, her screen name is Mary Vivian Pierce. And when, when I was like 19, 20, 21, 22, I mean, we were inseparable. We, we hung out constantly and had dinner and went, and one day we decided, because neither of us had a car, we're like, let's hitchhike to the Earl Theater. So, that's what we did. We hitchhiked up here. It took... Um, first of all, everyone who picked us up were, were friends. So we would be like, what are you guys doing? And we're like, ugh, we wanted strangers. A woman with a kid in her car, a, like, housewife, like, drove us here. Like, she was like, oh, we're going up Bel Air. We'll take you. I guess we looked like nice people or something. We got up here and, uh, <laughs> and, um, we were s sitting in the theater and this dude walked by and he slapped his butt. He wasn't wearing any pants. He slapped his bare ass and turned around and looked at us and went, he, he went, and then he'd go, he went, like that. And we were just, <laughs> we fucking screamed. I mean, we were laughing so hard. Um, <laughs> and then I was sitting there and I, I, out of the corner of my eye behind, when I looked over, I see this head going up and down, up and down. And I'm like, what is going on? I turn around and it's a woman giving this old, gross man with, like, yellow skin um, a blowy. <laughs> and I said, Bonnie, I was like, Bonnie, Bonnie, turn around, look behind us. And Bonnie let out a scream. That, like, scream. I will never forget that. She screamed at the top of her lungs. <laughs> And we jumped up and ran to another seat. <laughs> oh, that was so funny. Oh, my God. She would just do shit that was, like, hilarious. 
I like the Bonnie did not like being like famous. She did not like being famous at all, and she told me this story just to prove to you how because she you know she's in the old films like Pink Flamingos and she's you know she's Cotton in Pink Flamingos and Donna Dasher and uh in um Female Trouble um so you know she was a very prominent character in John's sort of the the Dreamlanders or whatever they called them. Uh, I want to. I'm just gonna drive behind the theater. I just want to see what it looks like. Um, Bonnie went to New Orleans, and she told me she got to the airport and she was waiting for the bus. And this man sat down next to her and he said, "Oh, where are you from?" And she's like, "Oh, Baltimore." And he's like, "Oh, I am a huge fan of John Waters." He's like every one of his films i've seen them a hundred times he's like oh i just love his movies so much and bonnie didn't even tell him that she was in the films because she didn't she didn't have the blonde hair i mean she had dark hair and um you know she looked totally different than she did when she was in the in the film she looks like jean harlow but anyway she is a It says, do not fucking enter. So how do I get back there? I have a feeling that, uh, that this is bullshit. I don't, I think that they're just hiding this. I'm just going to do it. There's no way that this, now this is a tight alley. I'm going to just turn this around. Oops, I always do that. Let me turn this around. Okay. I'm going to have to back up. Yeah, I don't think there's any way out of this alley. I think they just put that there to keep people from coming back up here behind the, th the theater. And I'm wrong, but whatever. They do have. Yeah, so the, this here. These here are the emergency exits. And um, I think when, when you came here, when it was the Earl, I think you could park in this parking lot. And these doors here are, they, there's a hallway that they, the guys would always um, break the light in the hallway. So it was just dark. So you could go in the hallway and not be seen and et cetera, et cetera. I don't know if a, I don't know if a church owns this place now or what is going on, but uh, it is obviously it is obviously over with here. But this theater also, I think... Jesus, asshole, shut the... Man, why don't you just slow down and let the guy cross the street? I mean, damn. It's... I can't stand people to do that. Like, if some... Oh, look. Oh, my goodness gracious. There's the old lobby, and it's... All right, I'm just going to pull up here and show you guys. It's definitely a church. It is definitely a church. Let's go have a look.
What is that? Maybe a braid? Whatever this is, still open. It's an old liquor store. Oh, this is a salon. Oh, this, this was abandoned. Yeah, so it's, it's abandoned. So, the refreshment counter was right here that was the entrance to the theater and then on each side there was a men's room and a a ladies room and a a, a ladies lounge and a, um, a men's room but they had an actual they had an actual like lounge in here Um, not abandoned, but closed. I, I, I would, well, you might be right, but it is looking pretty rough. I have to look up property records because it, what happens is these churches buy these places for like nothing. The church buys these places for absolutely nothing. I would love to go into the theater. Oh, it's killing me. I want to go in. The, the churches buy these theaters for next to nothing because nobody is going to open a single screen movie theater. There's like no purpose for it. So... They sell them cheap, and then, uh... Clean cuts. They sell them really cheap, and then... The church... You know, they have a... Mortgage on the place, and if they don't... Get enough tithing, they go under. So, that's, that's what happened there. It's weird because Baltimore has a lot of like churches that are always moving around. Are always looking for a place to to go to. It may have an owner, but if if I were If I own the place, I'd want to sell it and get rid of it as soon as possible. I can't. I cannot even imagine the taxes you would pay on a place like that size. Like that's that's a lot of money in taxes right there. All right, let's. Let's put you guys in your little baby seat up on the dashboard. 
I have to secure my 1300 babies. There you go. Make sure my 1300 babies are okay and safe. People drive on this road like maniacs. <laughs> I've never seen people go and drive so friggin' fast. Good Lord Almighty. Oh no, that salon's still open. But sometimes, you know, um, that braiding, uh, when they do braids, I mean, people, they'll sit for, you know, eight, ten hours uh, to get their braids done. <sighs> Sorry, guys. There's a Planet Fitness. Um, I, a lot, like, it was like 10 years ago, I used to work out, like, all the time, and, um, I joined a Planet Fitness near my house, and I lived in Elegant City, and, uh, <laughs> it was the most disgusting place I had ever been in my life, it was so gross, every machine was dirty, are we there yet? This is an aimless drive. I'm very sorry to report. Completely aimless. I don't even know if I'm in a lane. Yeah, I'm, I'm in a lane. Okay. People, look, they just go right over the lines. They, they're they not even paying attention. That bitch doesn't even have her lights on. And Baltimore is such a run-down, ratchet town. Like, where is everybody in a hurry to get to? A robbery? For God's sake, slow down. People are insane. See, now, I just slowed down and let that person get across the street. I didn't lay my hand on the friggin' horn to startle the man and just slow down. He was running, he got out of the way. Here's another idiot, just fly past, they go around me. Man, this McDonald's is packed. McDonald's is so gross. I am just nasty. So next week on this channel, there's going to be, on Friday, a new video. I have found two new places, and it probably will be two separate videos. It just depends. I don't know. One place looks pretty large, and the other place is not large, but it's... I'm hoping that um, I can just get over there without being noticed. One place is on um, um, the whole property was purchased and then um, they built a mosque there and I'm trying to figure out, I'm, I gotta look up the mosque schedule because I need to go up when it's closed but it's, the thing that I want to see is like on the other side of the property so I'm just figuring you know, if I walk, um, if I, if no one's there, I can just walk over to it and check it out. Oh my God, these roads are, the, the roads are outrageous. I, I truly outrageous. Overlay. 
Overly pizza. Frank's pizza. And pasta. See, now I'm getting hungry. I only had a bowl of cereal today. See, here's someone crossing the road. Just gonna slow down. There, there you go, sir. You're across the road. I didn't lay on the horn. It's been a minute since I've been up here. What the heck is that? Is that a nightclub now? It's an old bank. I think they turned it into a nightclub. This church is really pretty here. That church right there. Let me take you to the comfort zone. When you need to be left. When you need to be Welcome to the comfort zone. You guys know that song? Went into the comfort zone. Okay, I'm gonna get over in this lane. Maybe it's not as bad. Because this lane is really bad. How about an abandoned property? That would be fun if I can find one. I was going to go to one tonight that I brought the flashlight to go there. Um, maybe, let's see if we can get down there. We'll start heading back. I just want to check out a couple more things up here. But yeah, we can do that. There's one, it's so sketchy though. I'm like, truly, truly afraid. Oh, it's, it's such a bad area. I don't know why. I, I always have so much apprehension, reservations about going to these places. And the truth of the matter is, or the fact of the matter is, most... I, I don't, I rarely, rarely run into somebody in one of these buildings. People don't, they don't want to, they just, it's always they've left or they're out for the day or, I mean, I've, I can count on one hand how many people I've run into going into these abandoned places. But online now, I mean, everybody touts their abandoned videos with like you know they're like creepy incident and or you know I ran into a psychopath I saw one channel oh 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 I'm sorry sir There is one channel that I saw where the <laughs> the thumbnail was just completely outrageous. Uh, it's one guy crying, and then one guy with like you know who looks like he's um, getting ready to blow someone with the big wide eyes and the mouth. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then, um, let's see, I don't, yeah, I think it's over here, but I'm not going to get over because these people are like, like driving like lunatics. Jeez, man. Easy. Um, and then the and then the other guy is like wearing a hoodie, and he's like really scary looking. You can barely see his face. And it says "psycho attacked my friend in an abandoned house, um, almost killed." 
and I watched this video, and I, I mean, of course it's like tongue in cheek, and it seems like a lot of people these days just don't, they don't really care, you know, but the thing is, like, if you're gonna do it that way, at least make it good, because none of these things are good, they're just awful, clickbait crap, with bad acting, and You know, the guys are like in Kentucky or they it's an old house in the woods. I'm like, oh yeah, there's a psychopath living in the old house in the woods. Sure. That's that's reasonable. But some people enjoy that stuff. Other people uh just hate it. Oh my god. I am getting old, man. I can't even handle, like, motorcycles driving by anymore. I, like, freaking out. But that was really loud. Okay. Oh, shit. I missed the super chat. I will get there in just a second, super chatter. Don't worry. I apologize. I'm just kind of driving around a bunch of lunatics. There's someone just going 100 miles an hour, another 90 miles an hour. People in quite a hurry to get where. It's what time is it? Like fucking 10:30. Where are they going? They're like, oh god, oh yeah. hurry up, we've got to get to nothing. Drive faster. Driver, go faster. I want to get to nothing. We're going to be late to nothing. Alright, so now we're headed back into the city via Hartford Road. There's a couple of John Waters filming locations up here on Hartford. Damn, man. Why did I have to see that pizza joint? You know, I went to this pizza place. Um, a few weeks ago called Vito's which is on York Road in Towson and the pizza was so good I think it's probably the best pizza I've had in Baltimore so if you live in Baltimore go to Vito's on York Road and check out their pizza it's really good Anything fatty and that'll kill me is high on my priority list. Chowing down on. All right, let's see what I can. There, there is a filming location here somewhere. It is. Where is it? It's a little further down. Okay, I'm going to pull over real quick and read these super chats that I missed. My apologies. Okay, there's one. And there's the other one. Okay. Uh, hey, Susan Lineberry, how are you? Thank you, Dan. I really like your stories you tell. You're a really good storyteller. Thanks, Susan. Some people th get annoyed by the way I describe things. Um, but Susan, I, I appreciate that. William, a a.k.a. Arizona Alchemy. Seems like my channel is locked up. This is my personal channel. Well, William, I, did you make a porno tape or... 
not tape, but video. Kiro, Royal Pizza, German Hill Road, Dundalk. I will try it. I'll definitely try it. No, some people like, um, you, you see comments from people. Again, the new, the new Dan is not responding to any criticism or anything. I, I'm just not interested, um, in it anymore. And I have let it affect me far too much in the past. Um, but it's really hard because... Like, you're, I'm putting out stuff that's, like, you know, that I put my heart and soul into. And then just to have people say the most wretched things um, is really sad. But it's just part of the business. I just have to stop, you know, concentrating on it. And that's what I'm gonna do <laughs> I just don't I'm, I'm not I used to love like taunting trolls and calling them out and insulting them and stuff and it was fun but all it does is when you single out one person they it's like they become like like completely empowered and almost to a level of like erotic fornication or something like they're so excited that they got called out personally and uh you know i just what is the point in engaging with these people i just don't care it's like i just have to look at it as they're just strangers i don't know them you know but storytelling wise you know i've had people say you're all over the place and you you lose concentration and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm fucking driving. I'm driving. So, yeah, sometimes, you know, I lose <laughs> my place because I'm trying to, as you can see, the nightmare that is out here, you know, I'm trying to drive uh, and, and not kill myself. Not have an accident. That's all I need because... If I ever have an accident doing this, I'll probably not do it anymore. Well, we'll see. Depends on how bad the accident is. But knock on wood, I've never had an accident. I haven't had an accident yet. Hey, William, again, hello. Oh, hell no, Dan. Oh, hell no. Uh, oh, it may be because I had no content over the last three years. That's why. They'll do that, too. If you don't put anything up, they're, they're starting to get rid of dead channels. Um, which is why... You lose subscribers for no reason, and well, there is a reason because you're just getting rid of channels that are inactive. Uh, but there is a way to reopen the channel. You just have to go to your Google account and have the channel reopened. I think they give you six months to do it. So it's a pretty good amount of time. Because I had the podcast channel. I took all those down. I'm going to be putting up uh, some more um, podcasts uh, in the future. But uh, I am going to do a podcast this week. I've got to get a podcast done. I might do it tomorrow, actually. I'm just going to do it by myself. Unless someone wants to join me. Sal is busy he's busy all the time so it's very hard to get him 
Um, Rob Castle, thank you, Rob. Again, uh, you you've been so generous, and I really appreciate it. Um, can we go to Lincoln Park? I think we can pull that off just for you. So everyone, get ready. We're going to Lincoln Park. Um, I, you know, when I when I started um, the Dead Mall series, um, immediately, not immediately, but channels started popping up, and I would see people talking shit about me on Reddit, like that have like five thousand subscribers, and I'm just like, dude, like what? Like, why would you? But that's just the nature of the beast, you know? You attack who's successful while you're just copying what they do and you expect, you know, the same accolades as the other. You're just waiting for people who don't know about me to go to your channel and be like, oh my God, you're a genius. Which I don't understand that. Like, if you're just copying somebody, it's like, ugh. But, you know, I'm friends with a lot of the dead mall people. I, I don't, I'm not in any competitive thing. It's just at that time, like, I, I got all the attention. You know, they, Christ, I was doing TED Talks. And was in the New York Times. I got a whole feature in the New York Times. And I was in, like, every publication in the United States pretty much. Well, no, not everyone, but all the big ones. But it just, it helped my channel grow, and um, I think that those old Dead Mall series are amazing. I just, I have started to uh, remaster them, so there's a channel called Dead Mall Series Remastered, but there's also going to be some of the classic creepy videos as well that are going to be remastered that weren't shot in 4k um but uprising the demo series with ai to 4k it looks great but i look at all those videos and i still can't get over I'm like i'm like how the hell did i do this it just became an obsession and i really enjoyed traveling to go look at malls like that to me was so much fun because I got to see malls that you know were from you know from like another time basically like uh, you know some I went to a mall it was like all 60s another mall was all 70s it's just it was amazing it was such a cool thing to see and uh, I'm glad that I have those malls in the in the series, so because I would say half of them are gone now. They've all been torn down. You know? But what a time that was. It was a good time. I'll do it again. I just need to figure out, like, so, like what I want to do next but I've been trying to figure out what I'm going to do next for, for a while that's sort of why I came back to the filming channel to upload and to do these live streams I'm also going to add a, a video during the week like a, either probably a cutting room floor although they are kind of a, like obnoxiously pompous but um, let's just lighten it up a little bit, but, uh, because so many people get their feathers ruffled by that, when it's like, he calls his videos films, it's like, well, I don't mean to, it just feels that way, because it's like, I'm a filmmaker, but I don't really, like, why, what does it, 
why does it bother you so much? You know, because it's, it's it's just people who are have no talent, I mean, and they get pissed off, and it's like you can't, you just you can't please everybody. You really can't. But uh, you know, I am a filmmaker. Wikipedia says so. <laughs> that means it must be true. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Wikipedia doesn't lie. They're always so truthful. <laughs> like, some of my friends are on Wikipedia. And they have, like, these huge articles about them. And I'm like, you guys share way too much stuff when you're getting interviewed. It's like, my Wikipedia is, like, not that big because there's, I just, I don't, I didn't really share a lot of personal stuff in, in print, so, but whatever. Let's see who we got here. Oh, hey, Potato Vampire. Uh, would you ever have an art show for your photography? I love you. I love you too, Potato Vampire. Taco. Um. Would I have an art show? Uh, it has been offered to me before, and I turned it down because... At that time, I just wasn't ready. Um, because I, you know, I'm running a print store. The print store is literally like, I am so behind. Like, some people have been waiting now for six weeks to get their orders. Not that it's like a pressing matter. You will get your order. It just sometimes, I work alone, so I get really behind. And what happened, um, this time was that uh, the color scheme on the prints was looking really weird. Like the blues were, or the greens were turning blue. And I just, uh, and so I had to go through a whole process, wasted all this ink, everything to get this shit to work. Oh, I know where I'm gonna go. The gate's open, I think. I'm gonna drive down there real quick. It's a, it's, it's a scary ass place down here. Uh, hey, William. Um, you're a great filmmaker. I enjoy your work. Thank you, William. I appreciate that. Much appreciated. Okay, the gate's open. I'm going. I'm going for it. Oh my god, this is like a slasher park. This is so scary down here. What am I doing? Uh, William, thank you so much. I appreciate that, man. I truly, truly do. Okay, this is crazy. Um, an old abandoned house down here. Oh, I'm getting like butterflies in my stomach. This is a, this place. I'm surprised there's nobody back here. Oh. Now, if you were going to dispose of a corpse, this would be an ideal spot right back here, where I'm going to have to figure out how to turn around.
Play a stop. Guys. Okay. I, I have to pee. This is like the... What a great time to pee. I mean, seriously. Let's be out of my bloody mind. Lock. Okay. You could easily get rid of a body back here and just dig a hole. Now, on the right, up at the top of this hill, there's an old house up there that's abandoned um we are not going up there tonight that will be done during the daytime but uh and it's pretty treacherous to get up there man this looks really creepy back here it's dark too like like, there's no light at all. It was like pitch black. I was watching, uh, I've been watching a lot of UFO documentaries lately, and, uh, uh, was watching the, this one on YouTube called Travis, and it's about Travis Walton who was a logger in Arizona, who was out with his uh, co-workers in, the, in, a, in a preserve. I guess they were uh, cutting down trees in this preserve. And he, they were driving out of there. It was getting dark. is moving. Do you guys see this? No, it looks like somebody... Okay, I'm back. I am getting out of here. Uh, it is somebody up. It's, it's somebody wearing a white coat or something, and they're like fucking being... Now, it's a, it's probably a kid just fucking around, but it looks really scary. <laughs> so I'm just gonna leave. Oh, that was creepy. You know, I, I, I always get chills when I think about um, 
that, and I, I talked about this last week when I was in Druid Hill Park and that whole experience that I had with uh, my friend Jesse when we went there and we were drinking at night and like the son of Sam, or not the son of Sam, the Zodiac Killer, like this guy in all black is standing next to a tree and not responding to us. That was just some kid screwing around. I don't think that was anything. Like, because I saw a lighter. Said so they're probably smoking weed, not going stupid. So I'm not going to worry about that. But I just, I was just thinking about that fucking thing in, in Druid Hill with that figure standing there, and I'm like, hello, hello, I'm like, are you okay, and the guy is not saying a word, and, uh, that was really, really creepy, uh, so anyway, I was watching this thing called Travis, it's about Travis Walton, it's on, oh, you guys, and I also watched, if you haven't seen it, you should watch it, if you're into UFO shit, it's called The Interrupted Journey, a movie. It's Estelle Parsons and, um, um, uh, God, what's his name? James Earl Jones. And they play Betty and Barney Hill. And there is an HD version. There's an old version, old upload that looks like shit. Somebody has uploaded loaded a crisp beautiful hd version of it because it's it's out of it's not even in print i don't think um it's a tv movie from 1975 and it is so good it, it there are some parts that are genuinely chilling i mean you get like goosebumps watching it but it's called the interrupted journey it is about the Betty and Barney Hill abduction, which happened in the 60s, I think the early 60s, near uh, Lincoln, happened near Lincoln, Connecticut. And, uh, oh man, that movie, when I saw it when I was a kid, it just completely freaked me out. Betty and Barney Rubble. DJ Metzler. I will check my email. It's The email thing is like really difficult because I get so many emails. Um, that I've gotten to a point, even on Patreon, I, I just can't keep up. It's like, if I could sit there for, you know, 10 hours a day and answer emails, I just can't, I, I just don't have the time. But I do read the emails, so some of them I, you know, I respond to, some of them I don't, but on Gmail, I'm going to have to change my Gmail. It's just, I can't even, it's like all day long, like, messages. So we're headed to Lincoln Park, everyone. Hey, Destiny Glenn. Love these streams, Destiny. Thank you. And thank you for being a mod for so long. Uh, invisible Exploration. Uh, just got home with um, a school explorer in Springfield. Oh, still have the runners high going. 
Did I just read that correctly? Or have I lost my mind? Invisible, I think you've done this to me before. You've you've typed a message and I'm just like, what are you trying to say? You went with a school explorer in a town with high runners. Is that right? Did I read that correctly? Maybe I didn't read it right. My eyes are so, I'm so, my eyes are so fucking tired I can't see. So it's like, no, okay, I did not read it right. Okay, I'm going to go back and read it. I'm pulling over and I'm going to read it again. Just got done with a school explorer in Springfield, Ohio. Still have the runners high going. Oh, like like running like you ran around. I see what you mean. The runners high. Like you have a runners high. I know what you're I know what you're saying. Well, Invisible, thank you. And it sounds like you had a wonderful time in Springfield, Illinois, which I've been there uh, a couple of times. I apologize if uh, some of you are having audio problems. There's nothing I can really do about it. My apologies. Audio is fine. Well, see, there you go. Uh, we are headed to Leakin Park now. ETA. I would say. ETA 15 minutes, perhaps. What am I going to eat for dinner? Everything in my house, I'm tired of eating. Like, I buy these salads. Um, man, they're good. I have one left. I could have that and maybe a hamburger or something. I don't know. Another super chat. I would like to read it. The spotty area was good, sad. I can tell you why in a minute. Um, uh, old Tiger, hey. Love your live videos, Dan. Appreciate it. Well, Tiger, thank you so much. I appreciate that very much. Uh, over on, um, over on, uh, Patreon, by the way, I'm going to do a plug. I have a ton of exclusive stuff. You can sign up for free. There's stuff. Oh, excuse me. Oh, there's stuff on that level that's free. You can watch it. You can also see um, my two feature films, Go Go Motel and Night 50, that have been remastered, that are both, one's 20, almost 25 years old, and the other one's 23 years old. Uh, you can watch them over there. You can also see there's all the old podcasts that I did. Um, a bunch of exclusive videos, and, um, you can join for free, or you can join for five dollars, gets you everything, so, keep that in mind, and you will get a promo code to shop at thisisdanbell.com for 30, 
5% off, I think. So. So, yes. Very exciting stuff. And I have merchandise. Which will be sent out. <clears throat> if you order now, it will be sent out by the end of this week. Um, I mean, by the end of next week. Uh, this is Dan Bell. Dot com. And Patreon is patreon.com slash this is Dan Bell. And that's all I'm going to say about it. Because if I talk about it anymore, I'm an e baker. Even though I work to bring. Well, I guess, like, people who are. work at, you know satellite radio and they're trying to sell subscriptions. I guess they're begging to. I don't know. They're trying to sell something. You know. Whatever. It's very confusing stuff. People. <laughs> People are very confusing. I don't understand um well, it's, I don't. I don't want to understand. I'm done with it. I'm just done. I don't want to. Like, we're not going to give any more attention to trolls. You know, I think they're pretty much gone off of this stream. I haven't seen. I mean, maybe you guys are getting a few, I guess, but I, I really haven't seen any, any action from trolls. I used to get a. Uh, um, this guy would send me nasty letters. To my house, you know. It's no, it's no secret where I live. Um, but he was sending me these nasty letters. People are seem really obsessed with money and how much money you make. And. Um, The mods are doing a great job. I don't think, I, you know, I, I don't understand that. The, the first thing I don't, if I meet someone, I'm like, how much money do you make? It's like the rudest, most insane question. I'm not telling you how much money I make. I mean, I know that there's YouTube people who, like, show their checks and stuff, but it's like, you know, I have two popular channels. Uh, I do fine on YouTube. Uh, Patreon, I do fine. Merchandise, I do great. And now DoorDash. <laughs> now I'm a DoorDasher, too. I don't know how long I'm going to do the DoorDash thing. I just, I really had a good time last night. Like, that was so much fun for me. Because I haven't done anything like that before. You know, I've ne I haven't... Like, every time my phone went off, I, I didn't care how much the dash was, I was just like, I'll take it, I'll take it. Like, I delivered, like, um, a hot dog and a soda to somebody, and my DoorDash was, like, three dollars. And I'm like, and he was literally, like, just a few blocks from the place where the I picked up the hot dog. I'm like, dude, like, you're paying for the hot dog. And the fries, so that, was, that has to be. What do they charge for that? Like five seventy-five, six dollars, something like that. And then you're paying for DoorDash. This is crazy. Yeah, but the um, the DoorDash thing. My my friends are always right. They're just like, I didn't realize how easy it is to get a a job like that. Like it was so easy.
Yeah, can you imagine in Baltimore if you order DoorDash and you watch this stream and I, I show up at your door? Like, hi, I'm Dan from DoorDash. Here's your, your order. I ate some of your fries. <laughs> I had a bite of your hamburger. It was, I'll just tell you, it's delicious. No, not the bun, silly. Just the patty. <laughs> and I smeared some of my feces on your dessert, brownie. No, that was fun. I had a good time. You know, it's it just because I, I... Listen, I've always worked, like, really stressful jobs. And when I was younger, like, my jobs were... Ugh, I mean, I just... All I did was, like, just bust my ass for nothing. Like, pay back then was awful. Until I started waiting tables, and I actually use my personality, which, you know, maybe if you make your table laugh, which I always did, they will give you a nice tip, so I did really well waiting tables, but, um, I just didn't feel like I had any qualifications to do anything else, I don't know, it just, it felt weird, it felt like I was like, I, I need to do something to fill time, but also to make me feel like, I don't know, it's hard to explain, you guys, because when you work for yourself, you can get, you, you, you really, really can get down, like, you know, it, sometimes it's just so overwhelming, and I'm, I'm, tr I'm trying my damnedest to, to, you know, keep my shit together, but Ugh. Christ. Roads. But yeah, I had a great time door dashing. It was fun. Maybe I'll do it after this show, after I get off the show. I don't know. What, I probably not. I'm tired. But it would be cool because then I could do good food too. Fucking roads. Ugh. I think there's a cop sitting in that field with their lights on as I'm like swerving all over the road to avoid potholes. Potholes are out of control. I mean, seriously, let's fix this. Okay, now we're getting closer. This is right up here on the left is the how they abandoned house from the new video. Still wide open. Across the street here is Mondaman Mondaman Mall.
see. Philly had a mild winter. Yep, we did too in Baltimore. We're not that far apart. Guys are nuts. My, uh, I don't know what the post office, uh, USPS pays employees now. My mom worked at the post office for 30 years. Over 30 years she worked there. She was uh, a supervisor or something. She just started off as a mail clerk that worked, you know, the window where she would sell stamps and stuff. And then she hated her job. She, it was so sad watching her for years. She would come home and cry because she had a boss who was like, really awful and just years and years of this I, I think back on that and I think how the hell did she put up with it but she did she, you know she stayed there and retired But she hated that one. I think his name was Bert. Her boss, Bert. He was very nasty to her. He was nasty to apparently everybody, but she really took it to heart. And, um... I, you know, my mom, I guess, was going through, like, the, like, finding another job anxiety because her job she had you know health insurance for us and between her and my father they were doing pretty well now they seem to have endless supplies of money I don't know where they get their money from but they're both retired Their granddaughter is my dog, Wee Wee. Because my sister has no children, she can't. Uh, and they don't want to adopt a kid, so. The bell line will end with my sister and I. Uh, yeah, it really will be over. <laughs> it's done. Isn't that crazy to think about? Well, whatever. I went on a date once, and uh, a long time ago, and the guy came and picked me up in this beautiful car. I forget what kind of car it was, but it was really nice. And we went somewhere and had dinner. And after dinner, he asked me if I wanted to go to his house and play video games. And I was like, yeah, or watch a movie or something. So he turned right up this road right here on the right. And then he pulled into this dark alleyway and he pulled his penis out. And uh, I was like, dude, this is like, why wouldn't we just go to your house? And he's like, I changed my mind. I don't want to go to my house. I was like, okay, well, I changed my mind. I'm like, I want to go home. Like, what kind of date is that? Well, it's a gay date. 
That's a very gay date. He was my age. He was a good looking guy, but when he said he wanted to play video games, I was kind of like, ugh. Okay, it was kind of like a turn off for me, but because that means that all of his free time is going to be playing those stupid fucking games. No offense to any gamers out there, it's just. My friend, she just left her boyfriend because he can't stop playing fucking video games. She, she's just like I've she's like I've had it. I can't do it anymore. Um, they were supposed to go on vacation or something, and he uh, packed his video game console. And she was like, "You're not bringing that with with us." She's like, "I want your." undivided attention this week and he he's like no no I gotta you know I got I have games scheduled and all this shit and she's like you know what I'm done so she didn't even go on the trip she just moved out she moved in with her mother and uh she's looking for an apartment but she said I could she's like I could not take it anymore and her boyfriend used to be like three or four years ago he really was a good looking guy he worked out and everything and now he has a pot belly and he I mean it's just everything is ruined because all he does is sit around J Tay how are you I am watching The Interrupted Journey and it's excellent J Tay I'm telling you it's so great but make sure you watch the one that says HD version. Don't watch the other one that's like all craggly looking. But Interrupted Journey is a great... I love that film. It's back in the... It's back in the day when... TV made really good movies... The Sunday movie, and it, you know, they show this film that they spent, you know, f three months producing. And sometimes, man, the movies like when they do those Stephen King films, like The Stand, and it it was a TV series at one time. But it was a movie, but it was like three parts or five parts or something. But back then, they made really good TV movies. Nowadays, you... Uh, you know, they do series and stuff. Most of the time, you've got to pay to watch it. But they'd have, like, Wednesday night. Estelle Parsons and James Earl Jones are a couple abducted by aliens in the interrupted journey. No, it wouldn't be said like that. Thursday nights, only on NBC. Hey, Honeycomb. All right, we are um, entering Leakin Park. As uh, requested by Rob Castle. And uh, the abandoned place I was talking about, which was suggested by. I'm in trouble to remember that name. Is like so close to here. So we can go over there too. But I, I really don't know if I'm going to. We are, uh, excuse me, exiting the vehicle. Okay, those two trucks. All right, there are people in those trucks. Be 
because I saw the console lights were on. Smell test. That's a good idea. Comes the helicopter. Mattress. Kitchen set. Um, those two trucks kind of freaked me out because they are not people. They don't live at that house. That house is dark. And the people are sitting in their truck. Because your console lights are not on if you're spooked out. I shouldn't... Really Guys, that fucking helicopter is following me. They're literally following me. Yeah, he stopped. He was like hovering over top. And now he's going to. He's doing another circle. Yeah, they probably do think I'm dumping a body. Damn, he is still... Oh, God, damn. Where did that fucking van come from? He must have been flying. Jesus Christ. It's like I pull up, there was no cars, and then this fucking van is right behind me. A white van. And now it's just sitting at the stop sign. No, he's kind of following me still. Okay, so this abandoned joint. is over here. Man, that van better not be following. That van is definitely. Well, not definitely. I don't know about definitely. But I don't 
のあれですかあん。The abandoned place is right across the street. And I think I'm going to cross here because I want to see the driveway. Now, the driveway looks passable. But, 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 I'm afraid. <laughs> you ever seen that video of that dude in the kayak? And the kayak is sinking. Or it's like filled with water. And he's like crying, and his friend's laughing at him. He's like, Get me out of here. <laughs> oh, that thing. I love, you know who I love now is the Chick fil A girl. The Chick fil A girl's my favorite. No Chick fil A sauce? I mean, she is so funny. It's just funny that she was doing that on purpose. Like, I thought at first, oh, the, you know, she's got some kind of learning disability or something. But no, she's totally, uh, she's fried. She's so funny, that girl. Okay, where is the building? And the girl, um, the Chick fil A girl is really cute. She's pretty. Pretty girl. Alright, now. Um. Um. I don't know. This whole apartment building here is abandoned. I really, really don't know. I don't know if I should be going back here with a big flashlight. Let me just pull into the driveway. Which is going to be such an awful idea because I'm never going to be able to get out. It's right here. I'm not going up that driveway. No, sorry, Bob. Oh my God, I was like, well, sir, if you weren't going so fast, you wouldn't have. I mean, <sighs> these people in the city. Like, they can't drive, number one. They drive so fast. And then when they have an accident, you'll see people trying to kill each other when they have an accident. I am going to bypass this tonight because uh, I'm not certain. I, the daytime probably a better time to come. Oh, there's an old, there's an old Victorian there. That's, that's a pretty big house too. See that right there?
So that would be cool to go into. Thank you, Teresa Hanley. Rob K, creepy. It is freaking creepy. I just want to scope it out in the daytime before. Because this area here is, uh, well, it's not, it's not extremely sketchy. It's just, I, I don't know. I think those apartment buildings next to the house are both vacant. So if, if they are, um, I can try to get into those too. That would be really interesting, especially if they're furnished. Oh my God, it'd be like 10 apartments fully furnished that are vacant. It's like my favorite thing in the whole world. I love that. I'm gonna turn here. I'm gonna go to Nacho Bay. Get some pizza. I'm hungry. Hopefully, I can get a good night's sleep tonight. I'm like, so sick and tired of not being able to sleep. You ever, you know, you guys ever have that happen where you're just like. Well, I know people have it happen, but you can be like so exhausted and not you, you think you're getting in bed you think oh, I'm going to sleep so good and then you suddenly realize nope you're not going to sleep at all you'll just be getting up over and over and over again um, that's basically basically where I was at last night and I, I hope I'm praying tonight I get a good night and sleep so I can wake up tomorrow and feel refreshed and ready to go because I have a lot of work to do this week is like look, my new thing is not to dwell on like how much like every week I go put stuff on the on the whiteboard uh, basically a schedule and I say well these are high priority and these are low priority and some weeks I finish all of it and some weeks I don't and then I have to you know switch it over to the next week but um, structure is important but it doesn't matter what time of day. You can have structure in your business even at night if you choose. Yeah, if you choose to say, well, I want to work, um, you know, I would, I want to work from, you know, 10 o'clock until 6 o'clock. I've done that before. I just, <laughs> I prefer now kind of like daytime, but daytime I get nothing finished. The only time I work really well is nighttime. Christ, my fucking my head looks like a clown trash can. The giant fucking head. This light that I just stopped at. This is why I will never help another person. I, st I stopped at this light and this girl, who obviously is not from this neighborhood, she comes up to the side of my... This is when I had the BMW. This was years ago. And she's like beating on my window. And she's like, please help me. 
And I'm like, I roll in now, and I was like, what's wrong? And she's like, they're after me. She's like, they're going to find me. When they find me, they're going to fucking kill me. You've got to help me. And then she stops, and she looks at this car that's sitting across the street, and she just lets out this fucking blood-curdling scream and runs across the street and up an alleyway. And I'm like, oh, my God, this poor girl, like... She's having a fucking breakdown. So, I, um, had this giant flashlight, because I think I was out filming. I'm pretty sure I was coming back from filming something in Legan Park. I walk up the alley, and she has wiggled herself into this like crevice between like a board and a stairwell on the back of an abandoned house she's like wedged in there i had already called the police so the police were on their way and i'm like i'm like i'm like hey i'm like i called the police she's like they're not gonna be able to help me why did you do that she's like they told me not to call the police if I called the police, I, I said, just calm down. Everything's going to be okay. I'm like, why don't you come out of there because there's nails and stuff. I don't want you to get hurt. And she's like, I'm not coming out of it. So anyway, about five minutes later, the police show up. And I told them, I said, she's in the alleyway behind the house. So they go and they get her. And they bring her out, and she's like, they're like, ma'am, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. And they're like, do you know this man? And she's like, yeah, and he's dangerous. She's like, he tried to rape me. And I'm standing there like, I tried to rape, like what? Um... I couldn't believe it. Like, the cop took me aside, and then the other cops talking to her. And he's like, can I get your background information? And I said, yes. I gave my wallet. I was like, what? She's lying. I said, she's out of her fucking mind. She was screaming and telling me that people were following her and that they were going to kill her. And then she, like, was pounding on my window. Um... And the cop looked, he shined his light at my window and saw her handprints all over it, which I think saved me, but it wouldn't have, it, it wouldn't have made a difference anyway. The girl was totally whacked out of her mind, but she, she totally turned into this like streetwise broad when the police got there. And like, I was, I could not believe and she told them that I tried to rape her. I was like, what? You can go ahead, baby. Okay. Uh-huh. Um. So the cop, the, the cop said she's, um, she's, she said she's schizophrenic or something. And, uh, I told the officer, I said, I have never raped anyone. I don't, I would never do that. I said, I, especially to a woman, I said, I'm not, I said, I'm a fucking fag. I'm not gay. I'm <laughs> to women. Um, so he just said, he's like, don't worry about it. He's like, you can go. And I was like, oh, thank you. And I drove away from that. And I was like, that's the last fucking time I helped some lunatic on the side of the fucking road. And that happens up here. And I feel terrible because I've had people come to my car. Help me. I need help. I'm like, oh, fuck you. I'm not helping you. I'm not helping anyone. I, forget it. After that, the bitch, the fucking nutty ass bitch, he tried to rape me. I'm like, bye. I'm done. I'm done. No more, no more Baltimore shenanigans helping you know, trying to help, I'm trying to be a helpful person, because I could tell that she was not from, she, 
I don't even, I can't remember if she was white or mixed. But she was fucking hysterical. And I, she's like this, this like, girl running around out there. I said, honey, this is nowhere to be running around at night. Like, you are going to get hurt. Um, I was like, just, you know, I was going to drive her to, like, the police station. All right. The first thing I asked her was, where do your parents live? Because I was going to call them. I was like, what's your parents' phone number? And she wouldn't give it to me. She's like, they're part of this. They're they're part of this whole scheme. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And the police get there, and she's like, no, I don't know him. He tried to rape me. And I'm just like, when she said that, my heart dropped. I was like, oh, my God, I am going to be thrown in prison. I'll be a convicted rapist. <laughs> I mean... That bitch, ugh. So that's why. Be careful who you pull over for. But I mean, what would you all do if someone came banging at your window, screaming that people are chasing and following her, and then she screams and runs off into an alley? I mean, what would you do? Would you? Of anyone who has any kind of empathy would stop and help the person. I just didn't know she was like not so like that kind of not so. Yeah, anyone would do the same. I mean, you know. That's just how I am as a person. Like, if I see someone who's, like, who needs help or, you know, is in dire straits, you know, I help people out. Sometimes to my detriment. Because I used to throw money around. People would, oh, I can't pay my rent. I can't do it. I'd be like, here, take it. I was like, you don't even have to pay it back. Just, you know, pay your rent and get yourself situated. Um, my God, I've paid so many people's rents. I still pay one person's rent. However, um, it's an elderly friend of mine who she, if it weren't for my help, she would not have many she'd be in like some government housing or something so, and it's not that much money so I don't mind helping her out I always give her money for her rent and give her grocery money she eats Campbell's soup all the she loves Campbell's soup and she still goes grocery shopping on her own Evelyn. I met her at the grocery store. Uh, I was picking up my prescription <coughs> prescriptions and she was in front of me and um, she didn't have enough money to buy her medicine. Her medicine was like 18 bucks and she didn't have enough. And so I told the pharmacist I said I'll, I'll take care of it you know and then uh, she just you know she was trying to give me money I was like no no you keep it and then I went to the ATM and I gave her 200 bucks and she was like crying and like she, did, she doesn't she has trouble talking so she doesn't talk that much uh, but uh <clears throat> I don't mind helping her out. At least do something good for somebody. You know what I mean? And I'm not expecting anything in return. 
nothing. But there are some people who I helped out who were really starting to take advantage and not, you know, I'd be like, um, when are you going to get a job again? Like, you need to find a job. Oh, is that what I need to do? What do you think I've been doing? Trying to find a job. And I'm just like, oh, my God. I'm like, okay, well, you have uh, you have one more month of my assistance, and that's fucking it. So, I've sent <clears throat> uh, fans. I've sent them money too. People are like, I don't have any groceries. And I'm like, you know, I sent out 150 bucks. Who knows what the fuck? I mean, yeah, I'm not the Bank of Bell. Thank you. Yeah. But that's the thing that's the hardest. The hardest thing about it. Oh, good. My legal spot is here. The hardest part about it is when I really put my foot down, which was like probably about six months ago. The hardest part was telling everyone, I can't help you out anymore. I gotta stop. Because like, you know, I was doing my taxes. I, I know I fucked my taxes up. I know, I'm so worried that I like fucked them up. I gotta go. I gotta go to an accountant. Like I'm pretty sure I fucked everything up. But anyway, I just look over the year at how much money I give people, and uh, I always write down, you know, the amount and the person and everything. And um, <laughs> like. Um, last year, <clears throat> the year before last, um, I gave away like 20 grand, 25 grand over a year period. This $25,000. I could buy a fucking car. I could do the down payment on a house. Um, I mean, I do well, but it's not, I don't have, like, unlimited fundage, you know what I mean? So, I just had to, you need to, you need me to manage your money. I don't know about that. We'll see. I just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm fucking retarded is what I am. Um, hey, William, Dan, I have followed you, uh, for years, even before, um, joining your channel, I felt you were a decent, kind person. Well, thank you, William, I appreciate that. Um, uh, I can be, but... I have a lot of regrets, you know, I have a ton of regrets, some of the things I've, because I can be mean, I can be really mean, and uh, that's not anything I'm proud of, but I have really in the last year started to tackle that doing therapy um and trying to figure out why like why I I uh, can be so snappy and dismissive and 
you know. And there's instances that I recall where I'm just like, that was so fucking mean. And, and why would why why would you get so angry you would say that to this person or whatever? Um And it's not, it, I'm not, bl I'm not going to blame it on, like, mental illness, do you know what I mean, or anything like that, because I'm totally aware, you know, of, <clears throat> of what I'm doing. Um, I just want to be able to identify it before it comes out of my mouth, identify the situation, figure out what, what's the problem before it comes out of my mouth. So that's where I'm at. And, uh, you know, but I'm by no means perfect. I'm perfect, but there's no, 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 no. I mean, some people, some of my friends really like my sharp tongue. I mean, when I go off, and I'm like bitching about something. They're like, God damn, Dan. You know, um, but, and that's the thing with like trolls and stuff on YouTube, like, and, and past people that I've worked with and everything. I don't want like that, like vitriol to boil over. And I'm like, wasting energy on these people that I don't know, that I don't care about, you know, that I just need to move on from. And, uh, I did notice something like, oh, Rob, thank you so much. Jeez, Rob, you don't have to do that over and over and over again. Good Lord. Rob Castle, back with another 50. Thank you, Rob. <clears throat> um, I really appreciate that. Uh, sometimes it's like I, I can turn the anger into humor. Um, because I did that a lot on the podcast. I would be, I would be angry and then I could switch it around and laugh at it. And, you know, it's kind of like, I have like this like viper tongue anger that comes out. And then on the other, the next day I can be like, you know, oh, let me help this person. and Let me bring blankets to these homeless people and do, you know, I, it, it's hard to explain, but it's, uh. It's a flaw. It's a flaw. And I don't want to work. It's kind of why I don't want. Not that I have uh, handled anyone who's worked with me in a disrespectful way lately. <laughs> um, but I need to work by myself right now. Not because of money. I just, I need to work by myself right now. I I don't want an assistant right now. I just want to be on my own and try to navigate this and learn everything. Because I, I don't, I don't, I just, I've always had someone else doing everything. And I don't learn anything. So it's like, let's get this done. And I'm like, I don't even know how to do this. You know? So, it's, it, I don't know. It's just weird. Just weird. But now I'm learning everything. Um, but I learned how to do the website. I learned how to navigate social media. Um, you know, I'm back on this sort of uh, freight train for the Filament Channel to bring you live streams and videos every week. 
which I think is really important here because it, you know we brought a lot of people have come back and um, and that's a good thing. Um, <clears throat> but uh, yeah, I am. I'm trying, guys. I really am. I, I you know I don't I I don't I don't want to give people. You know, there's been, there's so many rumors about me and stuff that are just not true. Um, that just basically, like, people just make them up and, and say shit that's not true and they don't understand the full situation and whatever. And this last year... the last year and a half, I have been so angry and resentful. Not only at my former co-host, um, but some other people as well. And it just was it was all I could think about. So I just let it go. Let it go. And it took me all this time to do that. But I, I felt, I feel like a weight's been lifted off my back. You know, I, I just, uh, That's why I didn't work that much, and god damn, I was so angry. I just pissed off, like, but it's over. I'm, I'm done with it. I'm, I feel much better now. I feel like, um, like a normal person, um, instead of somebody who's pissed off and angry. I don't want to be that way. Uh, I remember there's this one day where I was walking Wee Wee and I sat down on a bench and man, I just broke down crying. Like I was just like sobbing on this fucking city bench. Um, cause I was just so tired and I was so just sick and tired of everything. It, I, I just got to that point where it was just, it just really, really got to me. And Wee Wee was with me and I'm just sitting there like, fuck, you know, like, how am I gonna get rid of this anger and move on from it? And, uh, I was, I started getting this idea in my head. I just said, why don't we just confront it? Let's confront it. When everyone said to me, don't confront it, I did confront it. It was the best decision I ever made. Truly. Because then I was able to let go. Even though it was ugly, it worked. So. I hate it to be that way, but. Uh, um, I'm feeling so much better. I just feel like a normal person now. Uh, I'm going to keep. I'm going to keep moving forward, keep creating this year. I want to put up some new Dead Mall series and do some real urban exploring, like the old days, a creepy place. But i got to go find these places. Uh, so I want to put stuff on the main channel as well. And uh, hey, William again. William, uh, I've been there. A secluded place and just let go. William, I don't know if a secluded place would do me any good. 
I can't, there's some people who deal, who are able to, I guess they, they're able to concentrate and everything in a, in a quiet place, not me, I'm, I'm just not like that, <clears throat> I, uh, I'd rather door dash, to be honest with you. Like, that was such a freeing experience. I can't tell you how much fun. I just felt like I was like, God, I'm having fun doing this. Mr. Raven, secluded places make me go crazy. Yeah, me too. No, I, I can't. I just can't handle it. Like, maybe for like... You, one of the worst experiences, I think it was like Christmas of 2017, and I was stuck filming, I was staying in Texarkana in this old house, this old miserable depressing house, and I was filming the, this, the... Boggy Creek Monster video, the Creeps and Monsters. <clears throat> and Colin uh, from Paranormal Files came down with uh, his girlfriend at the time. And uh, I just, they left. And I just started fucking crying. I'm like, I've got to get out of this place. Like, I couldn't take it anymore. Um,. I was like, please, Texarkana, if you want to, like, feel like you want to kill yourself, go to Texarkana, and you'll understand why that is the worst place I've ever been. It is the most depressing city I've ever been to. Everything's abandoned. Oh, it was horrible. And then Falk, Arkansas, is about 15 minutes away. So that's why I stayed in Texarkana, but... Man, was I ready to get the fuck out of that place. I was so happy when I left. Where did I go from there? I think I went back to Florida. I can't remember. <clears throat> anyway, you guys, listen. I'll see you next week. I'm going to go. I want to get some pizza and go home and relax. Um, it was nice talking to all of you tonight. Thanks to the mods. Thanks to everyone who stopped by. Uh, and thank you to the Super Chatters tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, I'll be back next week. And uh, we'll do another evening driving around, having a good time. I hope you all enjoyed this little excursion tonight. Opened up about some things. And uh, I hope to be dropping some food off at your house. <laughs> if you live in the Baltimore area, you never know. All right, guys, have a good night.